Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Vault Hunters. Today is boss day. We are going to go and kill our first boss. Might take us 12 attempts and 60 different sets of armor, but I'm sure we will get there eventually. So we're not just going to hang around on the couch all day. Let's jump into it. Still love that sound, never gets old. So I think I've got everything that I need. I've got my boss crates, got all of my tools, the new Paxel, got a load of healing potions and my totem. Well, here we go. To imminent death. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. Difficult in our actual boss fight. Ah, uh, well, this is going to be difficult. Oh, and just to top it off, we've also got six obelisks to find. So, yeah, that's the worst start that we could possibly have had. At least that's one of them out of the way, though. It's a little bit less scary when we found the first one. Oh, okay, that's the second one in the second room. That's actually not that bad. We're really going to be cutting back on the looting in this vault because we need to find all of these six obelisks. We'll probably do a little bit of looting at the end. But the plus side is, the quicker you kill the boss, the better your loot is. So there is a little bit of a trade-off between looting in the vault and the boss loot that you get. Although I'm absolutely taking that star essence oh that's the third obelisk within what a minute of coming in the vault that's actually really unlikely the problem is the more we find harder it is to find the rest of them so yeah we're, i'm still a little bit nervous but i'm feeling a lot better than when we came in the vault i'll tell you that and it just so happens that our fourth obelisk is in a village room let's just dig down i think probably here and see if we have a um portal room that's the word i'm looking for um hopefully no it doesn't look like there's one here is it worth looting down here or should i run to the obelisks mm. no i'm just gonna scaffold back up it's it, we can always come back here i just don't want to run out of time if we've got more obelisks to find and this is the problem when you start activating more obelisks you end up in rooms where you've already activated the obelisk and yeah, it's, it's a lot harder to find. Not too bad when you're pre-level 25 because the vaults are actually quite small. Oh, there's a creeper there. Um, but once you get past level 25, you can start running around in circles constantly and you can very easily run out of time. Oh, no. No, that's really bad. Okay. Um, uh, oh, well, we might as well loot some of these chests while we're waiting for the cooldowns to come off. Um, yeah, this is a really bad room because you can stay on the ice forever. It's really annoying to try and climb up and things like that. But more importantly, if you have a look at the minimap, there's no other passages coming off of this room. So this is a really bad room to be looting. You want to make sure that you sort of keep your options open. If you go in a room, there's no obelisk, there's no paths out. You know you're going to have to come back the way you came anyway. Yeah, it's, it's not ideal. That being said, the Paxel is putting in some really good work here, <laughs> breaking gravel and ice and stone and all these sorts of stuff, all with the same tool, so 100% recommend. And there's our fifth obelisk, but we need to talk about this room. This is the X marks the spot room. What you've got to do is just dig straight down in the floor and hope that you don't die. Um, <laughs> it's basically how it works. There's... The, okay, so apparently there was a creeper. Um, yeah, so what, what happens is there's basically a third of a chance that the room below is going to be filled with g gilded chests. There's a third of a chance that it's going to be ores, and there's a third of a chance it's going to be mobs. This is our first proper one. I'm pretty sure it's going to be mobs. It always is. Let's just get ready. Yep, yeah, there we go. Of course it was. So you just scaffold them. I don't know why. It's just every time. It's the first one that I do. It's always mobs. I know it's just a random dice roll, but yeah, it's it's a little bit scary. So I always stand on one block just so it gives you a little bit of a better platform, um, especially in a difficult vault because they hit really hard. I'm going to need to heal up here. And with 15 minutes left on the clock, we have found our final obelisk. Now this room, we have to obviously loot the geode that's above because it's got some really, really good stuff in. Um, maybe we'll loot the one below. I found a lot of really good sort of unique ores and stuff. Where's, ah, there we go. Um, in there, so it might be worth doing. Oh, looks like there's a ton of ancient debris in this one. And obviously the condensed blocks. The condensed blocks are really the main reason that you want to be up here. It's very rare that you actually get some 
sort of unique stuff, but the condensed blocks are super, super good. All right, I think we've got enough time. Oh, a cake. Let's get those extra couple of hearts. There we go. Um, yeah, so these are the ones you want to check. So have a look there. There's some Alexandrite ore right there. There's Beniatite right there. There's Ancient Debris. I mean, th there's tons in these little... Um, little thing. Oh, actually, that was Wootonite, not Alexandrite. Never mind. Um, this little annoying zombie... Yeah, he can die. Um, yes, I've, I've messed around with all my keybinds and <laughs> it's, it's really confusing me. Um, and then you want to check in here as well because these have the normally Beniatite or Laramar in there. But look, there's another uh, Alexandrite in that one. I'm really bad at recognising which ones are which. I know for a fact I've missed some unique ones in the past. But there's Laramar. And yeah, just in general, this is probably the best room in the game to get these unique ores other than maybe one of the sort of omega mine rooms or something like that three ancient debris right come on let's vein mine these here we go um yeah i really need a magnet or something um but yeah this it, it's worth looting these i think actually though we're, we're running out of time a little bit we, we need to start going for the uh the boss but i really need laramar for those knowledge stars so let's just finish looting this and then we'll go upstairs and fight the boss okay we've got nine and a half minutes left let's go oh my wow he's hitting so hard let's quickly just splash potion up um oh wow wow the difficult is really really ramping up and i forgot to take the extra potions out of my oh okay um yeah let's hide in the corridor can we sort of cheese it with a bow and arrow the only problem is he heals up if we don't attack him um i need more potions oh there's a witch there it's not going well i think that's fair to say um let's finish off this witch because she's just going to cause me a lot more problems um where did that even come from um okay i don't know what attacked me let's uh right let's let's grab the other healing potions that i've got out of here luckily i brought quite a few um yeah let's just grab all of those hopefully we won't need them all but you never know um go away don't have time for you okay so um we'll try just hitting him with a bow to start with i think that's gonna help oh no actually oh is he getting stuck here Oh, ow. That hurt. Um, healing potions. Okay, we're actually chunking away. At oh, no, he's gone. Uh, where's he gone? Oh, he's teleported downstairs, hasn't he? That's not good, because there's no... Uh, there's no passageways downstairs. So if we go down there... Oh, and he's back at full health. Um, okay, well, apparently we're down now. Um... Can I get him from here? This is this is harder than I was expecting. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, would help if I could actually hit my shots. Okay, let's run over here. Run over here. Okay, heal up. Okay, let's try and stay up here because then at least the little mobs can't. Attack. No one. Ah. No, that's the wrong key bind. Oh, I just threw like five healing potions at him. Oh, no. I don't think I'm going to have enough healing to get through this fight. I'm pretty sure I'm going to die. Um, should we just yolo it? I think that's probably, <laughs> probably the best thing is just run at him, keep swiping. Let's, I hope we actually do okay. Oh, he's hitting so hard. Oh, but he's at half health. We might be okay. Let's not let him heal. Don't let him heal. Whatever we do, don't let him heal. Okay. Oh, we might get this. Oh, where is he gone? Where is he gone? Oh, I'm out of healing potions. No. <laughs> uh, okay, just don't let him heal. We can tank it with our totem. There we go. The totem saved us. We've got regen. Come on. Yes! <laughs> He's dead. Oh, we've got our boss crate. Oh, that was... That was the worst boss fight in the world. <laughs> that was the most ridiculous. I can't believe I threw my healing potions at him. Oh, 
Well, that was uh, that was interesting. That was what? What did we get? Uh, we got a relic. That, honestly, that was not even worth it. Not even a little bit. Um, but especially since we skipped most of the loot in the vault. But yeah, well, we've got the boss crate. It feels good to have our first boss kill, but yeah, not not really worth it. Let's just check what this relic is. It is a sword handle. Cool. Warrior set, I think. Yeah. Okay. All right then. Well, uh, I think we should move on. We got another level, so I'm unlocking Rampage. That's going to give us 50% extra damage and really going to help with those boss fights. So, we're back on the contemplation couch to discuss a couple of things. Firstly, I've done a couple more vaults, we'll go through the highlights of those in a second, but first, what my plans are going forwards. So the next big thing that I want to do is relocate to another base. This one is great, it's it's really good starter base, it's done me... I forgot I didn't have my Electrum. Anyway. Yeah, this base has been really good, and it's been super, super nice for what we needed it for, but now is the time we need to go bigger. I've been messing around a little bit in creative, trying to figure out some designs, and I know roughly what I want to do. I've not got all the details figured out yet, but we can improvise as we go. What that means, though, is I need to gather a bunch of resources, especially Blackstone. So, we're going to probably have to run a couple more vaults just so that we can get some extra vein miner just so that we can gather that much blackstone that we actually need because i'm thinking we probably need a few thousand i also need an absolute ton of quartz and we really don't have that much quartz at the minute so especially now that we've got our piglin farm set up it might be worth making a trading hall grabbing some actual normal piglins and seeing if we can do a bunch of trades for some quartz. That's actually also going to get us a lot of blackstone, so I think that's probably the best plan. We're going to go set up a piglin trading farm and just go from there. Speaking of farming though, we need to check out this because I've not shown you guys this before. That is the wrong door. Um, if we go past our potion bro, which is still doing an amazing job of getting all those potions, and down into the depths, we can follow our lovely tunnel, and we get to our spawner. And this is a little spawner farm that I made uh, quite a few episodes back, actually. I just didn't put it in the video, because to be honest, it wasn't that interesting to watch. At the minute, we've got guardians falling in it. And the best part about this is because we unlocked the furniture mod, we also unlocked the supplementaries mod and the bamboo spikes. Now they are super, super cheap to make. Um, so you can just have the normal bamboo spikes, three slabs and four bamboo. You can also have a load of potion effects, but they need lingering potions and they I think they do eventually break. But the normal bamboo ones don't and they just apply damage to whatever falls here. So I have been able to just AFK either overnight or just for a few hours when I've been editing and things, and they just die. I don't get any thorns damage or anything like that, so I don't need a beacon to keep me up, and they will just die, and slowly it will fill up these chests. Now, I've done a little bit of AFK. We set it up as a creeper farm. We've got more than a double chest there. We've got a little bit of prismarine, um, along with the prismarine crystals and a little bit of overflow, and a bunch of raw cod. And raw cod can appear as a uh, vault ingredient for making the crystals. Um, but yeah, so this is gradually filling up, and it's one of the main reasons we need to leave, is this is just getting... It, eventually, this is just going to overflow to a crazy amount, and we're going to need some better storage. So let's get started on the new base and go from there. Now, I did tell you I was going to go through the vaults that we ran. We're going to do that super quickly and see how fast we can get through these. So vault number 11, we licked the crystal, placed it in the portal, and then ran straight into it. Got ourselves a personal space, strong and gilded vault, so that's extra damage, no mobs spawning, and extra loot. Absolutely amazing, definitely wanted to be looting this one. Collected a bunch of compressed ore from the spider room, whilst also managing to encounter a million different zombies, even though it's personal space. 
First obelisk was in this oriental room. As usual, we dug down to see if we could find any netherite. No netherite this time, but we found a bunch of compressed materials and some ancient debris. Hit another couple of obelisks without really running into anything too amazing. And then found the final obelisk with still 19 minutes left on the timer. A much better room for fighting a boss than last time, so it should have been a lot easier. We completely forgot that we had the berserk ability unlocked, but we still managed to chunk away at the zombie and killed it in a matter of seconds. Looking at the loot, it was a lot better than last time. We got a bunch of cookies and we got a decent amount of star essence, making our way towards our next knowledge star. So that was vault number 11. And hopefully you liked the new super fast breakdowns of the vaults. I'll be doing those for any of the kind of less important vaults, all the major ones we will run through in real time. Now, vault number 12 is an exciting one because it's been brought to you by the subscribe button. Have you tried clicking the subscribe button recently? You really should. About a quarter of you have been hitting the subscribe button, so thank you for that. But it allows you to keep on top of the series, make sure you don't miss an episode, and also helps me out a little bit. So, Vault 12, let's jump into it and see how that one went. So we ran into Vault 12 with no hesitation at all, which in hindsight, having a trapped and tired vault was probably room for hesitation. The first room was incredibly lucky. We got a crystal room, which is great for those special unique vault ores, as well as being able to get those unique gems that we're gonna need later on. Tried really hard to offer our hearts to Valera, only to be blocked by mobs, unable to mine the spawner properly, blocked by poison, until eventually we managed to get it. The sacrifice was definitely worth it though, because we got a couple of vault cookies and a black opal, which is one of the rarer gems that we could have got. Continued to mine up a bunch of semi-rare gems, somehow got a Batania achievement, and then headed out of the crystal room down the hallway to find ourselves in another crystal room. Offered time for the Wendar altar, only to get a favour with Wendar. Really, really good. It's going to help us later on when we get past level 50. Found a beautiful cluster of three Larimar, and then carried on down the hallway to see if we found another crystal room. Unfortunately not, but we did find an obelisk, which was fantastic. Only three obelisks to do in this vault. Thought I was being super clever by digging underground in the graveyard room, only to realise that when an explosion happens, you have nowhere to run. And the same applies to poison. Revisited our old zombie slaying area, scaffolded up to the top, and looted the geode. Jumped all the way down and grabbed ourselves a slice of cake. Then searched all the hubs and waterfalls for any rare gems. Found ourselves a black opal ore, really useful, but left that room in search of more obelisks. Hit obelisk number two in the last place that we killed a boss. Finally found the third and final obelisk in one of the forest rooms. Summon the boss and this time it was the Soul Blaze. Started killing it and then halfway through realised, oh there's a Tenos altar there, so grabbed that while I was in the middle of the boss fight. Decided to turn around and actually kill the boss, and then frantically looted the last few seconds before I got teleported out. The boss loot for this one was okay, got some gold, got some emeralds, got a trader core, pretty much the best stuff in there. But the normal loot was incredible, we got trader cores, we got a bunch of gems, and more importantly, we got a couple of the uniques, including some Iscalium. So that is us all completely caught up with the vaults. Let me know in the comments if you prefer the fast episodes, let me know if you prefer the really slow way of going through it, or somewhere in between. What we need to do now is go and make the trading hall. Then we can get a bunch of blackstone, we can get a bunch of quartz, I'm going to leave it running overnight and see just how much we manage to get, and hopefully that's going to give us enough to be able to complete at least the start of our new base. So we're going to be using Ian XO4's design for his piglin trading farm and that means we need a bunch of carved pumpkins so just trying to get as many as we can here and uh, apparently they're all orientated in a completely different direction. I definitely could have done this a little bit better but if this works we should have an amazing piglin bartering farm and basically as much blackstone as we could ever need. As per usual, links in the description down below, go check out the video, it's amazing, really well designed and he goes in through a full in-depth discussion of why it works as well as actually step by steps on how to build it. So to make the farm we need some scaffolding and in order to get scaffolding we need string and bamboo. Now here's a really cool trick for you, this is flax and any of my old RuneScape players will know that flax can be spun into string. 
once you've got the placement up and running, you can absolutely churn out this flax. It's super quick and you can get thousands of it every hour. And then all you need to do, stick it in your crafting grid and there you go. That's your string. All done. Nice and easy. No need for a spider farm or any messing around with general mob farms. Really easy to do. So I've been flying around for 10-15 minutes and I eventually managed to find a jungle. Now what we're really looking for is more than one bamboo because we can get one bamboo that's fine but they can't be grown with twerker so realistically we want to be looking for those kind of huge bamboo farms but we'll grab this just in case oh spiders um yeah we'll grab these just in case we can't find any um but let's uh oh no it was a skeleton not a spider um let's go see if we can find one of those i think they're called bamboo gr i can literally feel the frames dropping around me as i'm dropping these to the ground there's so many entities so we're not cutting them all down there's not really much point we don't need that many and it also allows them to grow and i don't need to make my own bamboo farm so yeah we're just going to stick with what we've got i think we've pretty much got enough now um yeah yeah, I think we've we, we've got enough. So let's head off back to our base and make some scaffolding. Oh, come on. Can we land on the couch? We can do it. Um, that's not quite what I had in mind. Um, <laughs> I can't third person view either. You're just getting to see the hollowness inside of me. A little bit dark. Um, yeah. How do I get out of here? It won't let me stand up. Um... Well, I guess we live here now. Clearly my connection to this couch is a lot stronger than I thought it was. That should be enough scaffolding. Oh, okay. Did not know that that was an achievement, but there we go. We got sca scaffolding. Scaffolding. Sca I feel like it's a pun that I'm just missing. Okay, so that is our box of ingredients. I'm sure I'm missing something and I'll end up having to come back. But what we need to do now is get actually bring a couple of pickaxes i learned from my last mistake i had to come all the way back and repair my last pickaxe about three times so yeah let's grab a couple of spare pickaxes and then head over to the nether because that's where we're going to set up our piglin bartering farm so we hollowed out this nice area near the nether roof now full disclaimer here I did fully intend to do a third person time lapse of making this farm. Now the issue is that it, the replay mod that I would have used to get it all to work just does not seem to like the Vault Hunters mod pack. I don't know what it is and to be fair that's probably why we've not seen Iskel do a bunch of third person time lapses but it just it doesn't get along, it doesn't work with Forge very well and it's just not not great. It crashes pretty much as soon as I try and do anything on it. And even if I do manage to get it, it it just takes absolutely forever. So we're just going to have to stick with the first person stuff. I'd love to do the third person time lapse things in a later series. I may end up doing that. But yeah, it's just not feasible with Vault Hunters on a technical level at the moment. We'll just have to live with it. So that is our Shulker Box Unloader or shulker box loader should i say completely finished now it's a random one you basically just put anything in it and it will just drop it straight on and load a new shulker we need it it's going to process items really quickly they're not going to be sorted i'm going to do that by hand for the time being and then later on we'll build an automatic sorting for it but you'll see it's just impossible to sort things at the speed that this farm goes so we place the turtle egg we just need a bit of glass um, block that off and that should be upstairs finished so we've got our turtle egg done we've got our fungus we've got our soul torches and they should all run over to this little trap door so tops finished here we just need to put in the dispenser for the carved pumpkins and then just actually hook it up with some redstone and then we should be good to go and we can start farming these piglins Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> okay, there we go. We are good to go. So we just need to find the center of the farm, which uh, is over here somewhere. Let me just check the coordinates. 
Um, yeah, about here seems about right. So we just need to scaffold all the way up to our AFK spot and then wait for some piglins. So we are up at Y247, just gonna chill here for about half an hour and then hopefully we should have some piglins. So yeah, we have some piglins. This is insane, <laughs> this is actually crazy. So we've just got a couple of steps just to do and then we can actually test out this gold bar. This is gonna be crazy. There's 128 piglins in here. All right, so shulker box is placed. We have a stack of gold blocks, um, so nine stacks of ingots. Let's see how quickly they're actually going to barter these. So let's just drop all of them in, drop the trap door, and then get ready for the trades to come in. Well, that's some. <laughs> that's certainly some. Um, okay, right, so that should... Oh, there's more. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, this is going to be a real problem. This is why the shulker box load is here. We can just spam here, get all of these done. The thing is, we could probably fit in another 128 piglins and it wouldn't even take that long. But I don't think we need to, to be honest with you. I think this is, uh, this is a little bit crazy. This just stacks and... St is, is that it done? Is that nine... That's nine stacks of ingots done. And the shulker boxes, if they, they're, ah, right, okay, they're all in here. So that's what, five, five and a half shulker boxes of completed trades in, what was that, like 20 seconds? Yeah. Well, we need a lot more shulker boxes, I'll tell you that. Um, yeah. Well, I guess we'll do the rest of the gold and see what we end up with. And that is all four stacks of gold blocks done let's have a quick check see what we've got what's that 19 shulker boxes obviously once they're all condensed it'll be a little bit lower but that's kind of insane yeah i'm i am really shocked at how quickly that was done just so you know i'm looking at it on the time now that took a minute and a half to do that last set so two minutes to do 36 stacks of ingots and to be fair I probably it was probably a little bit less than that because i've been messing around with things but yeah that's that's got to be over a million an hour surely so here's the important stuff because this is the stuff that i actually wanted we got a lot more stuff than this i've not even touched half of it but um here's all of the just random shulkers that we've got that it's just still unsorted i'm not i'm not going to bother touching those um just just right now but we got an entire barrel full of black stone and we actually overflowed this barrel so we've also got the next next barrel about a third of a barrel and we got about a half a barrel worth of nether quartz which means for every barrel of nether quartz we're going to need about eight stacks of gold blocks assuming that we didn't get too unlucky or anything like that but this is looking really, really good for our Blackstone project. The gold farm is really fast. The battering farm is even faster. We are pretty much good to go. But that is all we have time for today. We've actually done quite a long episode. We have Nether Quartz. We have Blackstone. Next episode, we are going to start on our main big base. And I'm really excited for it. I've got some good designs and I'm excited. Just, I really am. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff. Thanks very much for watching everyone and I will see you next time.